So this month, we've been going and discussing sowing and reaping. This is our topic for this month. And before I get into my, uh, my sermon today, which is titled, Don't Be Deceived or, or Deception. And next week, Andre will cover her sowing into the spirit. I want to take a moment and say that sowing and reaping is a real thing. It's a law that God has instituted that works forever. You know, God himself put in this law, and we... We read about it. We, we understand it, right? How many times we've heard sowing and reaping, you reap what you sow, right? You do good, you get good, you do bad, you do bad. But do we really understand it? Do we truly understand this topic? You know, we understand in a sense, you know, you, you take an apple seed, you plant it, what are you going to get? An apple tree, Right? You go to work, you're going to reap a, a paycheck, right? Usually. We, we, we work for money, right? Um, you sow into your marriage, you will reap what you sow, whether it's good or bad. You, you sow into your kids, you will reap in return as well, whether good or bad. And so on. But it's funny that deception is talked about when sowing and reaping is uh, talked about in Galatians 6, verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. I will be reading from the Amplified Version. He will not allow himself to be ridiculed, nor treated with contempt, nor allow his precepts to be scornfully set aside. For whatever a man sows, this and this only is what he will reap. So it's funny that it starts out with do not be deceived. If it's such an easy topic, what is there to be deceived about, right? That's kind of what I want to get into today. You know, today's world, it seems like deception is, is everywhere. Everybody and everyone's trying to deceive everybody else with politics, with global topics, with everything going on in this world. You know, deception is a powerful force. And it's important to learn how to deal with it. But it's, it's nothing new. Where did deception come from? Yeah. Remember, the serpent deceived Eve. So let's read Galatians 6. We're going to read 1 through 8. I don't know if you guys got these. Yeah, there we go. We can follow along. We'll read the whole thing together, and then we'll dig in. Brothers, if any of one Brothers, if anyone is caught in any sin, you who are spiritual, that is you who are responsive to the guidance of the spirit, are to restore such a person in a spirit of gentleness, not with a sense of superiority or self-righteousness. Keeping a watchful eye on yourself so that you are not tempted as well. Carry one another's burdens, in this way you will fulfill the requirements of the law of Christ. That is the law of Christian love. For if anyone thinks he is something special, when in fact he is nothing, specially, special except in his own eyes, he deceives himself. But one 
must carefully scrutinize his own work, examining his actions, attitudes, and behaviors. And then he can have the personal satisfaction and inner joy of doing something commendable without comparing himself to another. For every person will have to bear with patience his own burden of faults and shortcomings for which he alone is responsible. The one who is taught the word of God to share is to share all good things with his teacher, contributing to his spiritual and material support. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. He will not allow himself to be ridiculed nor treated with contempt, nor allow his precepts to be scornfully set aside. For whatever a man sows, this and this only is what he will reap. For the one who sows to his flesh his sinful capacity, his worldliness, his disgraceful impulses will reap from the flesh ruin and destruction. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Amen? So this text starts out reminding us believers that we need to fulfill the law of Christ, right? To love one another and carry one another's burdens in a spirit of gentleness. But there are deceptions that we fall into that prevent us from accomplishing this and fulfilling the law of Christ. And they have to do with comparison, which verse 4 highlights, without comparing himself to another. You know, we, we cannot neglect to bear one another's burdens. Because we won't fulfill the law of Christ. The first deception from comparison is more obvious. Verse 3 highlights this. For if anyone thinks he is something special, when in fact he is nothing special except in his own eyes, he deceives himself. So what does that mean? Come on, guys, talk to me. Talk to me. Here we can think we are doing okay. When we start to compare ourselves and our sins in our state versus other people's sins and state. Right? In our minds, when we start to compare and we see other people's sins, we see other people's state, oh, you know what? I'm okay. I'm not as bad. I'm doing okay. I'm fine. I'm better than this person. I'm better than that person. And we use this as justification that we're doing okay. Right? Who's, who's done that? Don't be, don't be shy. We're humans. We've done that. I've done that. We look at other people. We compare. Oh, you know what? Uh, I didn't mess up as bad as this person. I didn't mess up as bad as that person. I'm, I'm doing okay. And we justify our state based on that comparison. And that, my friend, we are only deceiving ourselves. And if you live like this, you're deceiving yourself and you will reap destruction. You know, this viewpoint could be from a place of pride, just like the Pharisees. Or even someone who never gets in trouble, tends to be a good person doesn't, you know, do big sins. 
goes to church, never really gets in trouble, listens to mom and dad, you know, respects people. And they justify their goodness based on looking at others. And they can't see themselves as an equal peer. Does that make sense? If our standard is Christ, then we're all on the same page. Does that make sense? Are you guys with me? If our standard is Christ, that's who we compare to. Once we fall into comparing ourselves into other people, we fall into deception. But once we understand that Christ is our standard, in that way, we see that we all are in desperate need of him. So when we're all in desperate need of him, then we can fulfill the law of Christ and carry one another's burdens. Otherwise, we just judge. You with me? The second deception from comparison is something not discussed much. But I believe it's one of the biggest deception believers have. You know you must serve, right? You read the Bible. Who reads the Bible? Yes. The Bible teaches us what? To serve, to preach, to evangelize, to make disciples, right? So the Bible teaches and commands us to serve. But when we compare in this way, you know what, I'm, I'm not that worthy enough to serve. You know, he can do it better. She can do it better. Who am I? You know, I, I, I'm scared. I, I, I have anxiety. I can't speak. I'm not a good speaker. I, I can't preach. It's, it's for that person to evangelize. You know, I, I'm just going to come, you know, be a good boy, be a bo good man, come to church. But, you know, this, this, this extra serving, this, this, this evangelizing, this making disciples, you know, it, it's not for me. It's just, it's, I don't have that. My friend, we deceiving ourselves. We are deceiving ourselves. Every born again believer has a mission on this earth. And the biggest deception that the devil gives, even our own mind, that we trick ourselves because maybe, maybe we're lazy or we don't want to do it. That somebody else can do it. Somebody else can do it better. Therefore, I won't. You have fallen into deception. Do not compare yourself in such a way. You have all have been given talents from the Father above. Every single one. We all have gifts. We all have talents. And it's up to us how we're going to trust and use them. And you can't compare yourself to others. Oh, you know, he can do it better. The pastor, you know, Alex Drachuk, he's an he's a evangelist, man. He, he's going to do it. I, I, you know, I'm not. I'm not an evangelist. We are deceiving ourselves. You know, we, when we push this 
this task off, this deception, the reaping is scary. The reaping of that deception is scary. And in the end, you might not like what you hear. You wicked and lazy slave, throw him into where the, there is darkness and gnashing of teeth. That is where that deception leads. Who wants to go there? Not I. You know, this is something that I've constantly battled with in myself. I know I've been given talents. I know I've been given gifts. And I constantly battle with myself and try to deceive myself. I'm not worthy enough. This, who am I? to go and preach, to go and teach, to go and do things. And this is like a, de a deception that I know firsthand. And I know I'm not the only one. We have to learn to fight these deceptions that come. Whether you look from above at people, I'm not as, as bad as him or her or you know, you think you're, you're humble. Oh, you know, let somebody else do it. You're actually not humble. You're being deceived because God himself has given you talents. And how we use and how we sow is how we're going to reap. I want you guys to, to question yourself today. Am I deceiving myself in either of these situations. And to fight this deception, you have to put your focus on Christ. You have to look into the mirror. Verse 4. But each one must carefully scrutinize his own work. Examining his actions, attitudes, and behavior. Examining his actions, attitudes, and behavior. Dear brothers and sisters, we have to... Look into the mirror, look into the word of God, and honestly, like honestly, evaluate our own heart, our own mind. Because deception is real. Deception is real. We... You've ever been tricked or lied to, right? Have you ever lied or tricked? Right? You know how that process goes. You start scheming, thinking, and then, and then it comes. The same deception happens in our minds about ourselves. And we can deceive our own selves. We trick ourselves. And so it's important to focus on Christ and look in the mirror honestly. Now let's move on to verse 6 through 8. You guys following me? Verse 6, <clears throat> the one who is taught the word of God is to share all good things with his teacher, contributing to him spiritually with his spiritual and material support. So verse 6, I quickly want to mention 
about this, but this can be a, a, a message for another day. In our community, in our Slavic uh, culture, we have deceived ourselves. This is a deception that we have that somehow, you know, the pastor, the teachers, they're more holy if they volunteer or do everything for free without support, that somehow that equates to more holiness. You catching what I'm throwing? We deceiving ourselves that because someone is doing something, that they're more holy when they're volunteering or not getting paid. That is deception. The Bible says right here, this is not my word, this is the Bible. Con the one who is taught the word of God is to share what? All good things with this teacher. Contributing to his spiritual and material support. You know, I'm, I know some minds are going to the whole prosperity thing. We got to pay everybody give them millions and drive Bentleys. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this deception in our, in our ingrained in our culture that somehow this person is more holy for doing work for free. Does that make sense? The more you sow into your teachers... And to your pastors, the more you will reap. Don't ever forget that. Don't let this deception get to you. You know, you know what it is? It's you being stingy. You know, in, the, in Ukraine, there's this word called skupe. That's what this is. Uh, forgive me if I'm being blunt, but... We're getting real here. Okay, let's move on. Move on to seven and eight. Do not be deceived. Everybody say, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. He will not allow himself to be ridiculed nor treated with contempt, nor allow his precepts to be scornfully set aside. Now altogether, for whatever a man sows, this and this only is what he will reap. For the one who sows to his flesh, his sinful capacity, his worldliness, his disgraceful impulses will reap from his flesh ruin and destruction. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. There are times where people can deceive you. There are times where Satan himself deceives us. But there are times where we deceive ourselves. We deceive ourselves. So I want to ask you, have you ever deceived yourself? Are you deceiving yourself today in certain areas of your life? Have you ever been deceived? Sometimes... We want something, we want things so bad that we begin to convince ourselves it's okay. In reality, we know it's wrong or we shouldn't go there because we're believers and I believe the Holy Spirit nudges on us. You guys know what I'm talking about. 
Those of you who, who, who got, the, got the Spirit know what I'm talking about. The Holy Spirit nudges on you, but sometimes we want something so bad that we begin to scheme, deceive, and trick ourselves into thinking it's okay. This is deception. This is real. Right? Again, sowing and reaping. It seems so, so obvious. It's like kindergarten, you know, my kids come home with homework. It's, you know, you reap, you sow. You, you, you reap, you sow. It's obvious. But it's just this verse 7, this starting, of, do not be deceived. This part is so important that it shows us that it's actually not that simple, the sowing and reaping. There's this huge deception, excuse me, portion that we often, often overlook. And so many of us live life deceiving ourselves. We deceive ourselves. There are many people here living in sin, dabbling in sin, and have deceived themselves that it's, it's not that bad. We scheme, we trick ourselves, we fight in our heads and our minds to, to convince ourselves that it's okay. Even though something is telling you, hey, you shouldn't go there. You should stop. Listen, you can fool people. You could fool your spouses. You can fool your friends. You can fool the church. But you cannot fool God. He who will not be fooled. But just let that sink in. He cannot, will not be fooled. He will not and cannot be fooled. There's many examples that we can insert here with sowing in the flesh. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about myself here, for example. I'm going to open up a little bit about myself and deception that I went through as a believer. And... uh. <laughs> Hopefully I don't get in too much trouble. But I'm okay with putting myself out there for the benefit of God's work. You know, there was times where I would have a few alcoholic drinks. You know, on vacations, on holidays, you know, I'm grilling chicken, you buy some beer to marinate it, you know, one for the chicken, two for me, and in my mind, in the back of my, head, my mind, my heart, there's this voice telling me, don't go there. The end of that is destruction, don't go there. Don't go there. But I'm this, this going on in my mind. I'm deceiving myself. Yeah, it's, the Bible doesn't say it's sin unless I get drunk or give in to strong drink, right? So I'm using that and deceiving myself, trying to trick and convince myself that it's okay. But the Holy Spirit's telling me, 
Don't go there. Don't go there. And I'm not alone here. I know there's people struggling, deceiving themselves with whatever, whatever it could be. You're sitting and you're scheming and you're tricking, but the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and telling you not to go there. But we trick ourselves and we deceive ourselves and the end of that deception is destruction. It is destruction. You know, I, I would even uh, talk about, you know, Charles Spurgeon. He's this big, famous Christian. You know, and he drank whiskey and smoked cigars. And there's that comparison, the deception of comparison. I'm comparing myself try to justify something that I want. How many has been there? Be honest with yourself. Be honest with God. You know, humans, we pick things that we want, that we desire, and then we figure out ways to trick ourselves into getting it. And alcohol, for instance, is something many Christians are dabbling with. And I'm not here to say you shouldn't you sh or you should, that it's sin, that it's, that's not what I'm here. I'm, I'm sharing my experience. And what the Holy Spirit was telling me about dabbling with alcohol. If you study alcohol, the end of the cycle, when you fully give in to alcohol, the withdrawals take your life. The withdrawals take your life. It's the only drug besides benzos that withdraw will literally take your life it's not by accident it's called spirits okay and i'm thinking i was thinking to myself that's the end result why am i even allowing a little door to that Right? But we don't want to think about the end results because we want the now. So we deceive ourselves and compare and trick to get what we want. Does that make sense? You know, I'm sharing this to show how deception works on ourselves. And I know myself enough to know that I can't listen to that deception because it will kill me. It will destroy me. And there's many people that are listening to deceptions in their lives, tricking our own selves. And the Holy Spirit's trying to put brakes. Hold on. Stop. Think about this. Listen. Do not deceive yourself. How many messy, for instance, right? How many women are so jealous, constantly scrolling through Instagram, looking at what other women got, all these things and stuff, and just with envy, jealous inside their heart, talking all kind of bad, gossiping about this and that, and you, you're deceiving yourself. You're letting jealousy take over, and you're sowing into that. And in the end, what do you think you will reap? 
There's something I learned in counseling that you have to play things out in your head, right? Before you go and do something, play it out in your head, kind of like you watch a movie, and just play it out, the whole thing, the whole scenario. But so many times we don't want to do that. We stuff it down. We deceive ourselves so we can enjoy whatever it is we want to enjoy, whatever it is we want to do. Or anger, lack of self-control. Even in eating, I mean, how many times we indulge in gluttony and we praise the Lord? We indulge in gluttony. We stuff ourselves like crazy. At the same time, we're thanking God for all this this food. Does that make sense? I'm not saying not to thank God for food or this or that. I'm just, just focus and try to see what deception you may be falling into. Because one day, the reaping will come for how you sow. And deception is so strong. Deception is so strong to the point we can trick our own selves. Like, do you ever think about that? You ever sit down and think about, like, where am I tricking my own self? How am I deceiving my own self? This is a reality. There's so many times that we've deceived ourselves and we act and react in so many wrong ways and we look at others, we try to blame others, we try to do all these things except for look at our own selves. It is good to look at your own self in the mirror before God, honestly. And to see where I, we may have decept- deceived ourselves. You know, because we all think we're right in our own eyes, right? We've all, we all think we're right in our own eyes. When we, when we talk, when we argue, even when we talk with ourselves, we're all right. But maybe we've been deceived. I want to read a few more passages and we'll be finishing up. The first one is from Jeremiah 17, verses 9 and 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and is extremely sick. The heart is deceitful above all things and is extremely sick. Who can understand it fully and know its secret motives? I The Lord, search and examine the mind, I test the heart. To give each man according to his ways, according to the results of his deeds. Our heart is sick. Our heart is is wickedly deceitful. We need to remember this. And not in a way to go become depressed and just sulk, oh, you know, I'm, my heart is wicked, I'm wicked. No, there's, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about this for us to be careful and to examine 
our hearts. To come to God and have him examine our hearts. When we see ourselves in our need for God, then we can be more effective in building his kingdom. Deceitful, this deceit has ruined so many lives, has ruined churches, cities, even countries. This is not a joke. And this is why we need Jesus. And not just need Jesus, this is why we need to go to him. Why we need to read the word. Why we need to look in the mirror, which is the word of God, and have him examine our hearts and our minds. Deception is real. And so many are deceived in many different ways. And when we have this deception, we can't fulfill the law of Christ. The last spot I want to read is Psalms 139, verse 23 and 24. Search me, I'm reading from Amplified, by the way, uh, Search me thoroughly, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there is any wicked or hurtful way in me, and lead me into the everlasting way. And see if there is any wicked or hurtful way in me. You know, I want us to have a moment on our knees before the one who cannot be fooled. If we could get on our knees. Remember, we're coming before the one who cannot be fooled. Maybe we're fooling our friends, our families, our spouses. We're fooling even our own selves. But we're coming before the one who cannot be fooled. And I just want us to sit on our knees in silence for a little bit. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Speak to God, the one who cannot be fooled. He cannot be mocked. He knows your heart. He knows your mind. And speak to him. Let the Holy Spirit examine our hearts here today. Don't wait for this deception or wickedness to grow and destroy your life. You will, you will reap what you sow. We will all reap what we sow. Search me thoroughly, O God. Know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there is any wicked or hurtful way in me. And lead me into everlasting way.
Let's just give time for the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts. Talk to him. Imagine this is judgment day. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there is any wicked or hurtful way in me and lead me into everlasting way. Lord, search our hearts. Search our hearts. We don't want to fall into deception. We don't want to be deceived. We don't want to deceive others, Lord. We don't want to reap of the flesh, Lord. Show us areas. Show us how we are deceiving ourselves. Search our hearts, Lord. Search our hearts for any wicked or hurtful way that is there. And lead us, Lord. Lead us. Lord, you cannot be fooled. Lord, forgive us for trying to fool you, trying to fool ourselves. Your word is true. Your word is true. And it will not change or conform to us. But it conforms us to you. Holy Spirit, work on our hearts. Work on our hearts. Our hearts are sick. Our hearts are wicked. We trick ourselves in so many ways, Lord. Help us. Guide us. Lord, we want to be a church that is true. We want to be a church where our hearts align with you. Like David. Lord, we don't want to be deceived. We don't want to deceive others. We want to be real. Speak to us, Lord. Throughout this week... Lord, show us, continue to show us ways that we have deceived ourselves and help us, Lord, to get out of that deception, to believe truth and not lies, to believe truth and not lies, to not think that we are better than others, to not think that others are more capable of doing stuff and, oh, oh I can't. Because you have given us all talents, Lord. We are your children. Help us to understand this. Help us to, to fulfill the law of Christ and to reap rewards in heaven. Lord, we want to be found faithful. I know we want to be found faithful, Lord. There are people here, there are believers here that really, that truly want to be found faithful, Lord. Guide them, speak to them. Guide them, speak to them. Search their hearts, Lord. Search my heart. Continue to work on our hearts. Because we can trick so many people, Lord. We can trick ourselves, and our heart could be so far from you. 
But you know, Lord, you cannot be tricked. And we need you, Lord. Amen.